Hey Data Geeks, thanks for joining me. Today, I wanna to take a look and answer one of your questions about whether or not it makes sense to get a used Model S right now or to order a new Model 3. Now, this came about because the Model S, the used ones, the certified pre-owned or CPO as we'll call them, they actually carry with them the free supercharger access for life. So you can actually use the supercharger network all over the world for free as long as you have the vehicle. So this helps in our comparison a lot because if you go on road trips, you will incur costs with a new Model S or a Model 3. And if you're a road tripper though, you may wanna go check out my other video where I actually built a calculator that you can use to get a rough idea of what a trip might cost you, say LA to Vegas or LA to New York City, whatever the case may be. So for this comparison, I wanna start by talking about the range. Now the Model S, of course, we know the range is on that, but we're talking about used Model S's here and older cars, older Model S's actually don't get the exact same range as the newer ones. For example, the newer Model S 60 kilowatt hour battery shows 225 estimated miles on the, on the website, but mine, which I bought just a year ago and it's a 2013 model, it only gets 200. So your mileage literally may vary here based on that. So if you wanna look at the, at the mileage, I wanna focus on what the used models are showing, not exactly just what the new Model S's are showing, and compare that to what we know about the Model 3. So what do we know? Well, the Model 3 starts at 215 miles for its range, and all the rumors and stuff I've seen uh, show that that is probably around a 55 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, this other YouTuber, Shots of Jameson, made an excellent video where he actually broke down all the different cost options or all the assumptions that we have at this point about what the actual cost may be after you add on things like maybe an upgrade to a 70 kilowatt hour battery or the dual motor or a glass roof or you know premium tires or whatever. So go check out his video too because if you really wanna figure out what your cost may be, he breaks it down in very fine grained detail for you. So I, I encourage you to do that. So I'm gonna use that though and say that for this one, in order to get the range that you'd want, you're gonna have to upgrade the battery and that can go anywhere from say five grand up to the 70 kilowatt hour battery, up to maybe 10 grand all the way up to a 90 kilowatt hour battery. But point being that the range between these cars is gonna be pretty comparable. In my experience, I other than the couple road trips I've been on where just maybe 20 more miles would have made a big difference because I wouldn't have had to stop as much. Uh, below, let's say 220 miles, you're probably not gonna hit that on a daily basis. Uh, if you do, maybe an electric car isn't for you, honestly, or maybe you wanna go full on out P100 or something like that. But point being that the range between these cars is gonna be fairly the same, uh, but it will adjust the price on the Model 3, and we'll get to price here in a second. So the next thing to talk about is charging, and this is the big one. So as I mentioned, the used Model S, the certified pre-owned ones sold by Tesla, will carry free supercharging for life. That benefit goes with the vehicle, not with the owner. So the new Model 3 will have a charge, and it will be fairly minimal, plus you get 400 kilowatt hours of charging free every year. So with those two factors in mind, I'm actually gonna give the point here to the used Model S for this one. Now, when it comes to performance, obviously the Model S has the P100D with ludicrous plus mode and all that crazy stuff. So it obviously is the fastest car, the quickest car you can buy, but I don't know if it matters a ton between that one and the Model 3. You know the Model 3 is gonna be fast. You know it's gonna be really, really quick but is it going to be that much of a difference to you? And since we're talking about a used Model S, I don't think you can actually buy a P100D used or any of those really top end ones. Most people are hanging onto those. Otherwise, you know, the resale price will be pretty close to what it would be new anyways. So again, for performance, I'm gonna call it a wash. I'm gonna say, yes, the Model S is better. And I know some people will be mad that I'm calling this a wash, but Really, for most practical purposes, for most people, they're both gonna perform incredibly well. They're gonna be really quick off the line and they're also gonna be really fast overall. And the next one is availability. And so for this one, it's gonna be tough because the Model 3, if you ordered it on day one or even before, right as soon as they opened the reservations or you stood in line, 
good for you because you're probably anxious. You're chomping at the bit to get your Model 3 now that it's 2017 and they're ramping up production. All signs are good that they'll be able to deliver at least a good chunk of these this year. But the Model S really has the edge here because you can buy a used Model S and typical delivery times are two to four weeks. So at best with the Model 3, you're a few months out. It's January now. At worst, if you were to order it today, they're saying mid 2018. So you're looking at, you know, a year and a half. Um, so that has to be a point for the Model S. Um, and I think it's a good one because if you're in the market for an EV, this is something that I think would sway you is a way to get it sooner rather than later. And again, it really depends. There's a couple other factors here that we'll talk about on which may, you know, sway you one way or the other. Okay, so let's talk about the tech in the car, on the car, around the car, all that stuff. Well, the used cars for the Model S still get the over-the-air updates and they have really great tech in them. I mean, obviously they're Teslas, so they have fantastic capabilities and they're continuing to get better as those updates still roll in. However, the new Model 3 is gonna get a point on this one because you can get full self-driving capabilities with it. You also have an enhanced autopilot, which not a lot of the used Model S's out there have. And you have any of the other bells and whistles that are being delivered today in new Model S's, X's, and will be available in the Model 3. So I have to give a point on the tech to the Model 3. Now it gets into price. And this is where I think it's really interesting because the Model 3, while it does start at 35K and there is a potential federal tax subsidy here in the US, that is most likely not gonna be what most people pay. And I say that because most people are gonna to wanna to upgrade at least the battery and maybe a couple of the other features, maybe the glass roof or the high fidelity sound or something like that. There are gonna be some upgrades that almost everyone is gonna add and that will push you well into the 40 to 50,000 range. Now, coincidentally, that is the range where a lot of used model S's are selling. So let's take a look at the data and see what it's trying to tell us about the availability of the certified pre-owned inventory for the Tesla Model S. So here on the Tesla pre-owned website, you can see that you can filter here by price, zip code, and model, even exterior color, because it's kind of an important thing if you really like certain color car. And what I did to get this data was I went to this website and I selected these filters here and then I actually copied all of this data down and parsed it into a simple little data set that we can work with here. So in my data, what I wanted to do first was just take a look at the inventory levels and see which models are the most available. You have the Model 60 with five cars, the 85 with 39 cars, the P85 with 20 and the P85 Plus with 14. So when I was talking about the difference in performance and all that, you have to really compare apples to apples here. So these are the only cars available, at least when I searched, and that would change essentially what I would do in those types of comparisons. But point being, you have a really healthy stack here, and I'm surprised that the 85s are the ones that are really showing up because they don't make those anymore, and a lot of people kind of covet them. Digging in a little deeper here to the used inventory, we can see that the average miles on the Model 60 are 27.7 thousand. There are only five cars there, and the range again is about 210 estimated miles, which I get from the used website as well because the new ones again are a little bit different. So the ranges you see here are from the website, not from the new Model S's, which isn't a fair comparison. So then if you take a look, you can see the average miles are for the 85 around 31,000, the P85 are around 29,000, and the P85 Plus close to 37,000. So they're all fairly low miles. That's maybe you know a couple years at most of driving, which if you think about the lifetime of these cars, it's gonna be tremendous. So I wouldn't really worry about any of these models here. And one of the surprising things here is how much of a difference there is in price between a couple of these models even though the average miles on the car are about the same. And as I break down the actual cost of all the different models, what you can see is kind of the area where they all bunch up right in the middle, right around this 62,000 mark. And surprisingly, there's a couple down here. There's one that has only 23,000 miles on it for 51,000. 
And then all the way up at the top, there's another one with just above 16,000 miles for 73,000. So if the difference between a P85 and a 60 isn't that big of a difference to you, and you want to just get the lowest miles possible, this view will actually show you where that car is. And I thought that was an interesting finding when I started looking at the data. Now I'll publish this on the web and you can go check this out to play with this calculator to see kind of what insights you may gain from it. And one of the ways you can do that is by changing the filters up here on the right. So if I don't care about the 60, let's say that's out of the question, I don't want that. I can do that and the chart instantly updates. And if I don't care about, let's say the P85, you can see those go. And the color coding again is based on the average number of miles and the height of the bar is the number of cars that are in that price range. So when it comes down to it, I think price is also fairly a wash because you're gonna wanna upgrade the Model 3 a little bit and that upgrade is gonna put you into the price range of a used Model S. Now, I know some people will be upset about that because the averages of the Model S are more expensive, but honestly, I would say it's in the same range, 5,000 here, there, in my mind anyways, doesn't make that big of a difference when I'm already gonna be spending close to 50,000. And the last one is about looks. And these are both beautiful cars. I mean, the Model S is a more bigger, beautiful sedan, a full-size car, whereas the Model 3 is a sleek and sporty little sexy car that will zip around and all that, but really they're both gorgeous. I would say, depending on what your life needs and demands, I needed a car that I could put a car seat in to carry my son around and a stroller and all that kind of stuff. The Model S is definitely the better car for me and it still looks great. So I'm gonna call this one even between those two. So there you have it my comparison between the used Model S and the new Model 3. I would love to know which one are you leaning towards or maybe the announcement about free supercharging for the used Model S, has that swayed you at all? So thanks for joining me again, I really appreciate it. If you're new to the Data Geek family, go ahead and subscribe and join us down below, I'd love to have you here. I post videos every single week about Tesla and climate change and SpaceX and all kinds of fun stuff where I can dig into the data and kind of see what it's trying to tell us. In and if you're already a part of the family, please share this video, go ahead and like it as well. And if you have any questions or any feedback for me, you don't like my setup, the music sucks, these graphics are horrible, any of that, I love it all, so please send it my way. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you back here next time.